The first thing, first thing I would do for uh, for an athlete to get to use the HydroWorks, which is usually the first thing I have them do when they come into the uh, the training room, to have them come in and uh, and work on the range of motion. But first, you got to get them warmed up. So I have them walking a little bit just to get warmed up, get comfortable, and then just going through a comfortable range of motion. Uh, that is very, that is stress very much to make sure that everything is pain free range of motion. And once they're in there for 10 to 15 minutes, usually the range of motion increases quite a bit, and that's the idea behind it. Uh, so we're doing flexion extension, and here is flexion extension with a little bit of uh, external rotation of the hip. There again, I'm focusing more so on the growing type of injuries, very hockey specific, making sure the adductors and, and uh, abductors extensions are working together but right now just trying to keep a normal plane of, of uh, movement move to the side here working on the uh, adduction abduction but basically just focusing on on the one the, the injured leg there again normally I try to use both legs so you're doing stabilization with the injured leg as well so uh, on a lateral slide it'll, I think it'll show on the video that I have both legs on here, the, the injured or the involved and the uninvolved leg off the treadmill and the other one sliding, bringing it back because you're using both the right and left adductors right here, one for stabilization, one going through the range of motion. And there again, it really depends on how sore it is. If you just let the treadmill pull it out to the, uh, to the point of, of stretching it and then do you bring it back hard, do you bring it back real hard or do you just let it kind of float back, it depends on how sore you are. The treadmill just, just takes it out and that's just kind of working on the range of motion right now. Uh, as the tape goes on, I, I speed up the treadmill a little bit more and more so it gets a little bit more uh, intense, I guess you would say. There again, it's just more ballistic, it's, it's a, more of a hopping, shuffle, that type of thing. Adductors, adductors. Working on the crossover, same, same thing, just, just adding uh, a little bit more difficulty to it. A little bit more range of motion possibly. A little bit more sports specific there again. I, this is more so for groin injuries, but all of these can be done on MCL injuries, high ankle sprains, just crossing over, doing carol kit, just crossing over. There again, quick feet, uh, trying to get the muscle to fire faster rather than slow, working on the full range of motion. You're working on, on uh, quicker, firing of the muscle to make that uh, work harder. Work both directions. Uh, facing forward, uh, the extension with opening up your hip, and again, this might be a little bit more specific to hockey. Working on the range of motion, you're you're doing extension and then actually rotating the hip. Uh, very similar to the hockey stride, but there again, that can be transferred over to any type of sport. As far as if you're doing a 45 degree cut, that's kind of what you're doing to your hips. Get down in the athletic stance. Try to keep the abs tight. External rotating and and uh, extension. And there again, depending on how, how sore they are, it should all be in a comfortable range of motion and bring it back against the resistance of the water. I don't have any of the uh, the jets going right now, but and this is closer to a hockey stride as far as trying to get the, a little bit more um, abduction, trying to get the legs a little bit wider apart, a little bit more hockey specific. Probably should be crouched a little bit lower, but I suppose uh, with the water height, kind of depending on how, how tall you are, if you can if you can crouch down or not. Uh, trying to mimic a little bit skating backwards and then opening up the hips and obviously that's that's a major part of hockey is being able to open up your hips like that just trying to mimic that movement but there again that being a defensive back in football the same thing you're back pedaling and you open up the hips to start running forward so it, 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 it transfers over to other sports as well going quite slow here but there again it, it all depends on how far the, along they are in their rehab if they're able to handle backpedaling at five miles an hour and opening up with a hip that's you just progress the rehab depending on how the athlete is doing pain-free range of motion like I mentioned I don't have the jets on holds the water a little bit for the picture so but you could add that and now we're going to go up a little bit faster for the skating stride it's going three miles an hour now you just allow the treadmill to take the foot back and then it's more important once you get back to pull it back quicker there again that's when the majority of the injuries happen is right when you hit full extension and just as you start bringing it back obviously not, nothing can d duplicate on the ice but I, I think this is fairly close anyway and there again just just increase the intensity or the, or the speed of, of, of the activity uh, and, and the pool I have has the, uh, the video to where they have instant feedback to where if I want them to go through a specific range of motion if if they're not towing off or, not, or good enough uh, with a high ankle sprain or if they're not externally rotating their hip as much as I want 
I can tell, I can see right away that they're not doing it. They can look at the TV in front of them and understand what I want. So uh, and I was going five miles an hour there again, just increasing the speed, increasing the intensity, working the muscle harder, more of a reaction type rather than rather than slowly going through the range of motion. And at this point in the rehab, they're already on the ice doing some things on their own. They're again, just, just focusing on the adduction, abduction. And there again, with the groin, but you're dealing with both groins, the stabilization one, the, the left leg in this case, and then the right one pulling it out, uh, using both. Wide stance, bring the foot all the way in, and go to a 45 degree angle basically, externally rotate as you're, as you're going back. The majority of the, of the injuries that we get with the groin or the hip flexors is when the, when the leg is all the way externally rotated and uh, abducted and then just as they start bringing it back. So that's the one benefit to the treadmill is it allows that full range and then some resistance to come back through the water and, and through, the, through the jets. And then the hose, um, the athlete that, that had the uh, groin pull did have, did, he did use massage hose from time to time but it was more so of a manual massage that I did to him daily. Played the following Saturday, and, and this was this was game night here. This is what it looked like game night, and played with no problem. At all. So he's been back. Uh, he's been back ever since, and he hasn't missed a game because of it. He doesn't use a brace anymore. He hasn't had any problems since. So maybe we should use Hydroworks and the Kaiser and a few other things right away when he used it last year. So. Most of the time it's uh, hip flexor or groin, lower ab, um, MCLs, high ankles, and we use a lot just for bruises on the foot when the puck hits the, hits the, hits the skate. There, there's a lot of bruises and, and, and they're, they're not walking normal for the first few days, so they're again just introducing the, the treadmill to them, uh, walking normal, towing off normal, um, and then introducing different twists and everything with the legs, with the hips. Uh, just to get either the foot, the ankle, the knee, or the hip back to normal range of motion, I think is probably the key component of what the treadmill can do.